legal representatives also and to auditors auditors of the company uh, now mandatory company has to issue the notice and length of the notice is 21 clear days shorter notice there is a difference now consent of the 90% of the shareholder is mandatory instead of the 100% shareholder as in the 1956 act there is one more slight change in the provisions when you pass and you propose any resolution uh, special business in the notice the nature of the concern as of now we were uh, giving only for the related to the directors whether directors are interested in this uh, resolution or not but now in addition to the directors kmps interest or relative of directors and kmps is also to be disclosed kmp means key managerial person one more slight uh, clarification is given in this uh, provision uh, the rule is it's a uh, means uh, judicial decided cases that if a notice of the any meeting is not given even to a one single person who is entitled to ho uh, have this notice then said notice will be void meeting and and the resolution passed in such meeting shall be void but here they have clarified if there is a accidental omission to give the notice then that uh, reason will not invalidate the proceedings of the uh, agm this is a change in the quorum of the meeting now now it is related to the number of members and this is applicable as of now number of members not more than 1000 then 5 if it is 1000 to 5000 then it's 15 and number of members more than 5000 then 30 so these are for the public limited company and in case of the private limited company there is no change this is provision for the if quorum is not present then any meeting other than the meeting on requisition shall be adjourned but meeting under section 100 shall be cancelled there is some change in the proxy but this change has come by the draft rule source of draft rule which which have not been finalized so far but draft rule says in case of a section 8 companies means non profit making companies presently section 25 companies in that case the proxy has to be a member of the company it's a, whereas in other cases proxy need not to be a member of a company and there is a limitation now one person cannot represent proxy for more than 50 members or more than 10% of the voting power this has come in rule 7.7 this is draft rule so far now government may prescribe any class or classes of the companies or in a manner in which member may vote electronically also and in draft rules they have prescribed two kind of the company uh, um, where this uh, voting through electronic means can be done one is for the listed company number two is company having 500 or more shareholders these companies are required to hold um, uh, to give the uh, facility of uh, voting through electronic means i will just skip few of the uh, slides because of the time constraint and i will go only a very important uh, uh, slides the annual return now the intent of this uh, act new act is more to give the benefit to the stakeholders and the investor protection so intent is the maximum information has to be on the mca portal so they have revised the annual return uh, performa also and they have given the contents are all defined and very very descriptive very important if you see in this contents two things are very important one is remuneration of the directors and kmps are to be given in the annual returns and what are the penalties and prosecutions have been done on the company 
and directors this has to be given third is if company has gone into the compounding of any offense during this year then details of which are to be given so the content says whosoever is going to contact the company for any deal or any uh, contract he must know what kind of the uh, uh, means uh, um, governance company has this listed companies annual return has to be uh, uh, certified by a practicing company secretary uh, if the paid up capital of that company is more than 5 crores and turnover is 25 crores second thing is very important now the annual return presently we are preparing on the basis of the data as on the date of the annual general meeting but in this new act annual return is to be prepared as on the close of the financial year that is 31st march of every year and it should be signed by the cs uh, uh, director and cs in practice but in case of the opc and a small company it has to be signed by the cs if there is no cs then by director that is very important in new act uh, in addition to the annual return the company has to file a report on agm also that is in, in addition to this but it is applicable only for the listed company and this if you see the contents of this report it includes everything what has happened in the meeting and this report has to be signed by the chairman or by the two directors one should be the md and it should be filed within 30 days from the conclusion of the agm and this report you say see that everything is given confirmation of the compliances of the act and rules confirmation of the secretarial standard uh, uh, compliances so this is again a new return has to be filed by the company to the roc in addition to that one more Uh, return is to be filed every listed company shall file a return of the change in the number of the shares held by promoters or top shareholders within 15 days of this such change this is very important see it will reduce the corporate litigation also back dated transactions also for the change in the equity so if there is a change in the uh, equity of the promoters or top share uh, members of the company then within 15 days such change has to be reported to the roc whereas in present uh, act there is no such provision and all transfers or change transfer of the shares has to be reported only in annual general uh, annual reports minutes uh, there is one important provision came that penalty for the tampering of the minutes this was not there so far in 1956 act if the person is uh, uh, means um, uh, a person is tampering any minutes of the uh, company then minimum imprisonment of 2 years and fine up from 25000 to 1 lakh so first of all you have to maintain the minutes very very diligently and then the, you should not tamper the minutes because the because of the corporate good corporate governance this is also a new concept in this uh, act the document can be kept in electronic form as may be prescribed so prescription has been made in the draft rules draft rule says that it is this provision is applicable to the listed company and company having not less than 1000 shareholders and debenture holders and security holder the documents have to be maintained in electronic form and the, in the same format there are certain guidelines have been given that have have to be followed before adopting this uh, provision i will take up now directors directors minimum directors and maximum directors 
कि मिनिमम डायरेक्टर्स फॉर ए लिमिटेड कंपनी एज इट इज थ्री प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी टू एंड फॉर वन परसेंट कंपनी ऑब्वियसली वन एंड मैक्सिमम डायरेक्टर्स लिमिट हैज बीन चेंज फ्रॉम ट्वेल्व टू फिफ्टीन दर इज वन मोर चेंज इन द प्रोसेस ऑल्सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन टू एनी अदर नंबर देन यू नीड नॉट टू गो टू देंट्रल गवर्नमेंट परमिशन ओनली यू कैन चेंज द नंबर बाई पासिंग ए स्पेशल रेजोल्यूशन दिस इज अ वेरी गुड प्रोविजन टू प्लीज द वुमेन इट्स अ मैंडेटरी फॉर अ सर्टन क्लास ऑफ द कंपनीज टू हैव एटलीस्ट वन वुमेन डायरेक्टर द प्रोविजन सेज एज मे बी प्रिस्क्राइब बाई प्रिस्क्रिप्शन हैज बीन मेड इन द ड्राफ्ट रूल्स सो दीज रूल्स आर स्टिल इन ड्राफ्ट पोजिशन एंड रूल सेज द following companies shall appoint at least one woman director one is listed companies any other public company having paid up capital of 100 crores or more or turnover 300 crores or more and list these provisions are to be complied with by a listed company within one year from the commencement of this provision and for other limited companies 3 years from the commencement of this provision companies have to comply this provision This is also a new provision, the resident director. This is also intent to avoid the night flying companies or night flying directors. The intent is there must be any person, at least one person in the company who can respond to the queries and information uh, to the government or any other organization. The provision says every company shall have. at least one director who has stayed in india for not less than 182 days in the previous calendar year here they have used calendar word calendar year otherwise whole act they have used the word financial year for the independent directors the provisions are very clear now one is very important in this new act they have given very clear instruct uh, directions provisions uh, related to the directors as well as independent directors they say provision says the following company shall have at least one third of the total number of director as independent director and this provision has to be complied with within one year from the commencement of this provision the provision says that the every listed company or any other public company whose paid up capital is 100 crores or more and turnover of 300 crores or more or public company here one more condition has come public company having aggregate outstanding loan borrowings debenture deposits exceeding 200 crores so these kind of the companies have to appoint a director independent directors at least one third of the total board <laughs> this is alternate directors and additional director and nominee directors i was saying ki this uh, act has come in phases this is a classic example of this section see this section has three kind of the uh, directors additional director alternate directors and nominee directors so two uh, two sub clauses are applicable third is not applicable so additional directors clause is applicable nominee director clause is applicable but alternate director clause is not applicable here only change is the board can appoint a additional director but the term shall be for the next general meeting uh, conclusion of next general meeting or the due date of the annual general meeting whichever is earlier suppose i appoint a director on 15th of june and my due date of holding agm is 30th of september and i hold the agm on 1st of september then my additional director's tenure will be up till 1st of september the conclusion of the agm whereas due date of the agm is 30th of september 
alternate directors the provision is not applicable as of now but there is a change change is as of now you can appoint the um, alternate directors for a person who is away who is residing away um, from the place we are meeting normally held but now uh, provisions are very clear only case where director goes abroad for at least 3 months then this applic uh, this clause is applicable and whenever directors come back the the term of the alternate directors uh, cl um, uh, means close it nominee director it's normal there is no change um, the uh, nominee directors are being nominated by the bankers financial institutions or the government uh, having the share capital the casual uh, casual vacancy on account of uh, the um, this nominee directors can be filled by the board of directors there is a change in the qualification and um, uh, disqualification of the directors they are mentioned an important thing is if he is a unsound mind undischarged insolvent he or he has applied for the educated as insolvent and application is pending and order has been passed by the tribunal for disqualify disqualifying him for appointment of director or if he fails to pay calls on the shareholding sh sh share capital very important thing is if you see at the last if he is a director of a company which has not filed the financial statement and annual return for the period continuous 3 years so this is the same provision which is existing also but change is existing in existing prov uh, provision it is applicable only for a public limited company but now it is applicable for all the companies these are the new disqualifications mentioned in this act are if he is a convicted for a related party transaction at any time during last 5 years he cannot be appointed as a director if he has not obtained the din or he has convicted for any offense for imprisonment for 7 years or more or if a director is convicted for imprisonment for not less than 6 month and period of 5 years has not lapsed then he is disqualified to act as a director there is a change in the limit also now a person cannot become the director in more than 20 companies as against 15 in the uh, existing act and out of 20 uh, companies public companies should not be more than 10 and companies have to comply this provision within one year from the commencement of the provision so far as in existing act the the duties were not provided in the act now in new act very specifically duties have been provided for the directors among all the duties you see the at the fourth clause he shall not involve in the situation in which he has direct or indirect interest which conflict with the interest of the company that is very important now it it is it will be very difficult for the director of a small companies or medium companies to uh, means uh, comply this provision otherwise all the uh, normal thing he should act in a good faith he should promote the object of the company for the benefit of the members benefit of the employees and environment protection so these are the duties provided in the act this is also important change in the vacation of the office also provision says if he incurs any disqualification specified in section 164 and very important thing is if he fails to attend the meeting for consecutive 12 months instead of three meeting in existing act if a person is attending uh, absent from the meeting for consecutive 12 months then he will automatically vacate the office very important note is given in this provision is director has to vacate the office 
even if his leave of absence is granted to him or her so it means if director request for the leave of absence and leave of absence is granted and even then he is not personally um, attending any meeting consecutively for the 12 months then he will vacate the office <coughs> second provision is if he fails to disclose the interest of in any contact or he becomes disqualified by order of any court or he has been removed in pursuant to any provision of this act then he will vacate the office penalties are given but very important thing is where all the directors have vacated the office at the same time then what will happen the provision says that the promoter or the central government shall appoint the required number of the directors till the time uh, the shareholder appoints in general meeting in transition period the uh, um, promoters or the central government will appoint now i will come because i have only 5 minutes so i will just uh, conclude the uh, independent directors independent directors have been defi de uh, defined in the act itself they say ki director other than md or whole time directors or the nominee directors they are independent directors and director who in the opinion of the board is a person of the integrity possesses relevant expertise and the uh, experience he is not a promoter and he is not a relative of the promoter and he has no pecuniary relationship with the company its holding company subsidiary company associate company promoters director during last two financial years very important thing is notice of the appointment of the independent director shall disclose the opinion of the board that such and such person is uh, fulfilling the requirement of the provisions of all the acts all, all the provisions of this act he has to give the disclosure uh, at the first meeting and every first meeting after the every financial year that he still qual qualifies all the provisions of the act to act as a uh, independent director and there is no change in the status of his uh, independence as a director now the remuneration independent director shall not be entitled for any remuneration or stock options but he is entitled to have a sitting fees sitting fees fortunately it has been maximum limit has been increased in draft rule from 20000 per meeting of the board or the committee to rupees 1 lakh per meeting of the committee he can get the commission on the basis of the profit and reimbursement of the expenses for the attending of the meeting the term of the independent director shall be 5 year and he can be reappointed after passing a resolution a special resolution for next 5 years but he may hold two terms of the 5 years after he may rejoin 3 years means cooling period is 3 years code of conduct complete code of conduct for the independent directors has been given in schedule 4 of this act last is very important the liability of the independent director shall be only for the acts omission commission which had occurred with his knowledge and with his consent or convenience so if the independent director has the knowledge of any any contravention of this act then he is liable for that for example if he attends the meeting and he does not make any dissent to the resolution or such resolution is in contravention of any provision then he shall be liable for that and even if he does not attend the meeting and he gets the minutes of the meeting and after receiving the minute he has not right to the company or he has not objected to the resolution which contravents the act he will be uh, liable for that now i will take very important i will skip all this i will just very important uh, section that is one the 185 the two sections are there that is 185 and 186 which are very very important and very very uh, means uh, it's a hot topic nowadays in the corporates 
See, this section says no company shall directly or indirectly provide any loan or give guarantee or provide security in connection with any loan to any director or any other person in which director is interested. And any other person has been defined clearly. Any director of a lending company, director of a holding company, any partner or relative of such director, any firm in which he or she is, uh, his or her relative is a partner, any private company in which such director is a director or a member, any body corporate in which not less than 25% of voting power is exercising by such director or by two or more such director, or any other body corporate where board of directors are accustomed to act with the director on such direction. So everything is covered. No direct company cannot give any loan to the directors or any firm or company or the corporate body in which directors are interested. Only exception is company can provide the loan to the MD or whole time director if it is a part of the condition of the service extended by the company to its employees. And such resolution, uh, any resolution 